Well, thank you all very much indeed for tuning in to our virtual open morning, and may I extend to each of you a very warm welcome. Later on, you will hear from several of my colleagues and from some pupils too in the form of a Q&A session, but let me start by setting the scene for you. Had you been here in person, you would have seen that our open morning runs as a normal school day. The boys and girls go about their everyday business, in lessons, in break times, in their houses, and this afternoon, typically, they'd be on the sports fields and busy with their rich extracurricular lives. We do our open mornings that way because we want our visitors to feel very welcome here, but we don't want them to think that we've gone to too much of an effort either. We want to offer you a genuine insight, not an airbrushed highlights package or a greatest hits compilation. And if any of the younger generation are watching this, they won't have a clue what I mean by that, so you'll have to ask your parents what I mean. My hope is that despite the restrictions of this format, you will gain a sense of the atmosphere and the ethos of the Lees. We aim for a blend of informality and tradition. We want the pupils to feel relaxed, at ease in their environment, and comfortable in their interactions with my superb colleagues. We want them to be friendly, good fun, but also respectful and well-behaved, purposeful and hard-working, but without being over-pressurised. The pupils here are very ambitious, I've found, but that comes from within them as it should, and we try hard to ensure that we don't make them feel as if they're subject to oppressive pressure from us as well. We regard ourselves as the Sherpas, experienced and supportive, but ultimately it's up to them, with our guidance and encouragement, to decide on their own personal Everests. The result is, I think, a truly special place, one in which education is determinedly about much more than examination results. Just before exams became an endangered species, we had the pleasant surprise of being awarded the Sunday Times East Anglian Senior Independent School of the Year. And that was largely on account of our stellar A-level results the previous summer. But I have to tell you that if we measure our success merely in terms of producing great grades, then we set our sights far too low. Instead, what we aim for here is nothing less than human flourishing. The curriculum, after all, is not the purpose of education, but merely a means to it. Alongside good grades, we aim to promote personal and social well-being and to raise people to distinction, to allow Lesians to flourish and excel. To do all this, we have to see education as more than merely transactional. At its best, it is always about relationships. Great relationships lie at the heart of a great education. And for that reason, I have always felt that the best teachers don't teach subjects, they teach people. That's our vision, and we deliver it via our three foundation stones, academic, extracurricular, and pastoral. The three are absolutely interconnected, of course, but to follow St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, the greatest of these is pastoral. Why? Because it provides the platform for flourishing in all areas of the life of the school. It doesn't just mean looking after people when they feel a little fragile, for whatever reason that might be. That's an important part of it, of course, but our conception of pastoral care goes much wider than that. It's about providing individuals with an environment and a structure of support which makes them feel encouraged, supported, resilient, and positive about their lives at school. Because if that is how they feel, then they can achieve the extraordinary. If you're confident that you'll be supported if, or let's be honest, when things go wrong from time to time, only then will you be willing to take that creative or productive risk to move outside of your comfort zone and attempt the exceptional. Notice, attempting the exceptional is not about perfection. Confident human beings understand that the human condition is characterized by frailty and fragility. We want Lesians following John Wesley to be the best versions of themselves that they can be. But that doesn't mean being perfect, and it doesn't mean you need to be something or someone that you're not. At the least, we want you to find out who you are at your best, and to do that, you need to be comfortable feeling uncomfortable. You need to be willing to take risks. In a school context, that could mean one of many things. 
It could mean putting your hand up for that solo in the choir or band, deciding to audition for a school play, or simply asking that question in class. When you think you have the right answer or an interesting perspective, but you aren't quite sure. I want there to be lots of different routes to a fulfilling and accomplished school life, and I support everyone in their chosen path. But whatever that path is, I want everyone at this school to experience that wonderful, exhilarating, life-enhancing feeling of having exceeded what they ever thought was possible. At some point in their careers here, I want them to be able to look back on something that they've achieved and think to themselves, wow, I never thought I would be able to do that, and now I have. That's why pastoral care is so important. It isn't about cotton wool, quite the opposite. It's about encouraging human flourishing. The bedrock of the outstanding pastoral care offered here at the Lees is our house system, each house led by a dedicated housemaster or housemistress, underpinned by an effective and supportive tutorial system and an entire staff which is committed to the care and welfare of pupils. And the result, I believe, is pupils who are respectful of each other, kind, generous-spirited, considerate and with a strong sense of right and wrong, living and working in an environment where they can discover who they want to be and know that they'll be accepted for it. The second foundation stone is academic. I said a few minutes ago that exam grades are not the be-all and end-all, but please be in no doubt, in terms of public examination results, the school is in a great place. Taking GCSEs and A-levels together, the last several years have seen extremely strong performances from the Lees, with well over half of our A-level pupils being graded either A or A-star, and around one in three Lesians achieving three A grades or better. At GCSE, our results are also extremely strong, with well over 90% of results graded at grades 9 to 5, and around a quarter graded at the top grade, grade 9. That's 25% compared to a national average at grade 9 of around 4%. But alongside the high flyers, there were individuals who would never have dreamed of getting the high grades they got before they came here. Some of our greatest triumphs were with pupils who far exceeded their own expectations. Our success rate for getting pupils into university is also very impressive. Despite all the uncertainty in this last year, well over 90% of our departing upper sixth got into their first or second choice of university. But results are just the outcome. Much more important is the process. And that is something on which we have been focusing very hard in recent years under the leadership of our superb Director of Teaching and Learning, focusing on the quality of our continued professional development, the quality of our teaching and the quality of the learning environment which prevails here, not least working hard with the pupils to establish and highlight the learning habits we instill here at the Lees as the Lees Learning poster illustrates. So we've mentioned pastoral care and academic matters, and the third foundation stone is the wider curriculum. And we call it that because it reflects the fact that really if you have our broad conception of education, then the curriculum is really everything you do, whether inside the classroom or outside it. Even during lockdown, we've kept this aspect of school life going, with virtual dance lessons, ensembles, and other opportunities. But when we're back to being fully functional, our pupils benefit hugely from the breathtaking range of activities on offer. As headmaster, I'm proud of the distinction our pupils achieve in sport, music, art, dance, the CCF, design, STEM, Duke of Edinburgh, Eco Schools, debating, Model United Nations, and a wide variety of other clubs and activities over a hundred of which go on every week. I support as many of these activities as is humanly possible, and I love doing so. And every week I spend a good chunk of my weekly school assembly praising pupils and congratulating them for their achievements in the wider curriculum as well as in the classroom. The wider curriculum is important for two reasons. Firstly, it's fun, and secondly, finding something you love and something you're good at is one of the best ways to build confidence. And confidence 
is perhaps the most important gift which we as teachers and you as parents can give young people. Four more factors I think I have to mention. Firstly, the points of entry into the school. There are three main points of entry, into year seven, into year nine, and into the lower sixth. All are competitive and generally oversubscribed. Years seven and eight are kept deliberately small, with just 30 in each year, with a mix of day and boarding pupils. Collectively, we call years seven and eight Moulton, named after the founding headmaster of the school, William Moulton. And Moulton runs as a mixed house, something of a school within a school, an even more nurturing environment than in the other years, as befits this age group. From year nine, the school increases in size and we have roughly 100 pupils in each of the years from nine through to the upper sixth. We also have two sixth form only houses, one for boys and one for girls. And this allows us to attract some very strong pupils to join us in the sixth form. Usually around 30 or so join us in the lower sixth. It's very occasionally possible to gain places to move into the school in other years, such as year eight or year 10. But this is unusual. And of course, it depends on there being a space available, which is rare. All told, the school is absolutely full at its current size of around 560 pupils and we have no wish to grow because we want to maintain that ethos of which I spoke earlier. I quite often explain this by describing the school as a big small school, not a small big school, by which I mean we're big enough to offer that vast range of opportunities but small enough to get to know individuals with all their quirks, strengths and weaknesses and characters. Secondly, co-education. We have been fully co-educational here at the Lees for decades with the overall mix of pupils at around 60-40 boy-girl as defined by the capacity of our houses. Moulton, as I've already said, runs as a mixed house and so too do our day houses from year nine upwards. Alongside these houses, we have two all through girls boarding houses from year nine through to the upper sixth and three all through boys boarding houses from year nine through to the upper sixth. In addition, I've already mentioned our two sixth form only boarding houses, one for girls and one for boys. Girls and boys play a full and equal role in all aspects of school leadership from the prefect team to opportunities in the wider curriculum and within their houses. The third factor to mention to you is Cambridge. To be located where we are in this exceptional city and within walking distance of one of the world's greatest universities is, of course, a wonderful advantage, recreationally, culturally and academically. For instance, Cambridge allows us to offer exceptional opportunities for academic enrichment. Thus, for instance, sixth formers who work on independent research projects to move beyond the narrow confines of exam board specifications are often teamed up with local postgraduates to open up new levels of mentoring and academic support and development. So for any number of reasons, Cambridge is a great place to be. Fourthly, a word about our different categories of education. You will almost certainly know already that pupils at the Lees can be either boarders, home boarders or day pupils. 50% of our pupils across the school as a whole board. We don't currently have home boarding as an option in Moulton. In year seven and eight, you have to choose between day and boarding. From year nine, however, around 20% of our pupils are home boarders. Home boarders are also accommodated within the boarding houses, going home last thing at night, having their evening meal here with us and having done their evening prep. 30% of our pupils are day accommodated in our three day houses. I believe that all our pupils from all categories benefit greatly from this structure. The day and home boarding pupils benefit from the vibrancy of school life, which surely exceeds anything that a purely day school is able to offer. And our boarders benefit greatly from being grounded into our local community via our day and home boarding elements. And pupils make great friendships across these categories, by the way. In lessons or in activities, it wouldn't be possible to tell which ones are day and which ones are boarding. 
It is sometimes possible to switch from one category to another, and as pupils move up the school, many do indeed choose to join the boarding houses, basically because they love being here. I should say a word, therefore, about our approach to boarding. We don't have flexi-boarding, we don't have weekly boarding, but we do have a flexible, modern and family-friendly approach to boarding. There is plenty of scope for contact between boarders and their parents and lots of pupils who live locally choose to board for this reason. Please be reassured, we are a proper boarding school, but more than that, we offer something unique. Cambridge boarding, which isn't just boarding which happens to be in Cambridge, but rather something qualitatively enhanced, distinctive and immensely fulfilling and stimulating. Meanwhile, my aim for the school is the same as for each of our pupils. We want to be the best that we can be. I'm very proud of the school, but determined that we will strive to be ever better at what we do. With our new state-of-the-art vision studio and technology lab, we are testing how to incorporate augmented reality and virtual reality into our teaching and learning. Everything we do, from the IT to our marking and feedback policy, is evidence-based, so we know it works. The result is a community which is really flourishing. I'm sorry that you can't be here in person to see it, and we look forward to welcoming you to the Lees in person soon. Thank you for listening, and enjoy the rest of the open morning. If you have any further questions, please do feel free to contact my colleagues in the admissions department, who will be delighted to assist you. And I'll hand you over now to our Director of Pastoral Care, Mrs Hind. Pastoral care is at the heart of what we offer at the Lees. We work hard to help pupils develop the skills they need to fulfil their academic potential. But alongside this, we also look to ensure that they develop the spiritual and emotional skills needed to become fully rounded individuals. We want them to understand how to build healthy relationships with one another. We want them to learn how to take reasonable risks so they can live full lives. And most importantly, we want them to understand that they play a key role in both our community and the wider world. Pastoral care involves everyone in our community and is an integral part of school life. Each pupil is a member of one of our school houses which offer a mixture of day and boarding facilities. Houses are run by housemasters and housemistresses who are supported by a team that include matrons, assistant house staff and tutors. The majority of our house staff are also teachers, which means that throughout the day our pupils have someone who knows them, looking out for them, keeping an eye on them and helping them navigate the challenges of each day. All teenagers have good and bad days and it's important that they have someone who is able to celebrate their successes, take a pride in their personal achievements and also offer a quiet word of support on more challenging days. Matrons always have an open door and are ready for someone to sit and chat over a cup of tea and a biscuit. Housemasters and housemistresses keep a close eye on how a pupil is progressing in the classroom and socially and, if needs be, will find an opportune moment to have a quiet word and offer a guiding hand. If someone is feeling unwell in our community, we have a large specialist team who can offer support. At the Lees, we regard physical and mental health of equal importance, and we've worked hard over the last three years to encourage our pupils and staff to talk about how they're feeling. For those who are feeling physically unwell, we have a medical centre which is staffed 24 hours a day by a team of highly trained nurses who are supported by the local doctor who visits the school three times a week. All our school prefects, matrons and house staff have received mental health training and are able to support someone should they suffer a crisis. We also have more specialist support provided through our team of counsellors who visit the school throughout the week. Our wellbeing prefect regularly speaks in school assemblies, talking to the pupils about the continuum of mental health and reminding everyone 
that we have a responsibility towards one another to support whenever we see a friend in need. Inevitably, before exams, pupils do feel under pressure. So throughout the school year, we run a series of mindfulness classes in order to equip our pupils with the skills they will need to handle pressure later in their lives. Developing a positive sense of self and feeling your voice is being heard is a key part of growing up. At the least, we regard personal, social and health education as fundamental to helping our pupils develop a strong sense of who they are. And so we have embedded these lessons into our weekly timetable. Our PSHE programme takes place every Saturday for all year groups from year seven to lower six. Through a mixture of outside speakers, trained specialist teachers, assemblies and tutorials, we aim to help our pupils have the knowledge and skills that will help them successfully navigate the challenges of the wider world. Financial education should help pupils gain a sense of how to keep the money safe in their pocket. Internet awareness training should help ensure they have a healthy approach to social media and the internet. And our sex and relationship lessons focus on how to build a solid friendship with friends, as well as exploring key concepts such as consent. All these are ideas we seek to explore in an age-appropriate fashion, allowing pupils to ask questions and challenge ideas along the way. Through assemblies and houses and in tutorials, we encourage our older pupils to speak about their ideas and experiences and share their knowledge so what they know becomes passed down through the different year groups. Listening to the pupil voice is an important way of sharing and developing our pastoral work. The senior and junior committee offer a forum in which our pupils can meet regularly with the senior tutor to propose new ideas and raise concerns. Our new joiners survey allows us to understand the experience of those fresh to our community. And our annual anti-bullying survey allows pupils to talk to one another about the, how they treat each other. The results of this survey are shared in assembly and in tutor time, and we take time to discuss what we are saying to one another and to reflect on how we can change. It would be naive to think that pupils always listen to teachers, but I do think they listen to one another, and I think this survey in particular has become a powerful way of speaking truthfully to one another and helping us to learn to be a better and stronger and more tolerant community. Our school community was founded on the Christian principle of agape, unconditional and self-sacrificial love. Through weekly chapel services led by our school chaplain, we work out what this principle means to us, how we should shape our lives and take on responsibilities towards one another. All pupils are rightly proud of the work they carry out for the local community, whether it's arranging an evening entertaining parents, selling hot chocolate at break or serenading someone in the dining hall for Valentine's Day. Our pupils rise to the challenge of raising funds for others with great flair. But we like to think that our pupils do more than just give their money. Lockdown has shown how willing our pupils are to give of their time. We saw pupils cooking meals for the NHS, others making care parcels for the elderly, and some of our staff putting together sports kits for children who are more vulnerable in our community. We're rightly proud of how we responded to this crisis. Our pastoral care is a whole school approach that focuses on all aspects of the pupil's life while they're at the Lees. We encourage pupils to build strong relationships with one another and work in a purposeful fashion to make the most of their time here. We're pleased to say that pupils at the Lees flourish. I would now like to hand over to Jeff our Director of Teaching and Learning. I believe to learn there has to be belief, as belief opens up possibilities. To learn there needs to be exercise. The body moves, the brain grooves, 
not physical exercise, but mental. And to learn, you need to forget. For the mind is like a parachute. It only works when it's open. Be open to new ideas, new ways of working. To learn, you need to have attention and be active. For learning is not a spectator sport. You do not learn just by sitting in a classroom, listening to teachers, memorizing prepackaged assignments and spitting out answers. You must talk about what you're doing, write reflectively about it, relate to past experiences and apply these to your daily lives and move forward. You must make learning be part of yourselves. You need to take shallow learning to deep learning and this will become profound and known as wisdom. The state of your mind is important. If we are say we are bored, we will be bored. Your mind needs to be in a place where the saw is sharp. We've all heard of the three R's. I think there is a fourth R, recall, remembering, retention. For Socrates said that there is no learning without remembering. There is nothing as such as a good or a bad memory. There is a trained memory and an untrained memory. You've got to find the right strategy to train it. Focus is not something we have, it's something that we do. Memory is not something we have, it's something that we do. Energy is not something that we have, it is something that we do. The benefit of turning it from a have to a do is that it becomes a strategy and you have control over it. And finally, to learn, you need to teach it. Learn with the intention of being able to teach it to someone else. So learning is belief, exercise, forgetting, attention, state, and teach. Be fast. So based on this, do you think you are a good learner if you are a thermometer or a thermostat? I'll leave you a few moments to ponder this. At the least, there will be emphasis on the future, not just the past. When we critique work, there will be suggestions on what to do next time. There will be focus on how to develop and progress. When you receive feedback, there will be emphasis on you doing something with it. We will expect you to ask yourself, what are you going to do differently next time in order to learn and improve? But to manage this, you have to be creative. And we as teachers need to be creative also. And now more than ever before. It's a really exciting place to be in the classroom. And I mean this for both pupil and teacher. Here we use the Google Suite for Education. Lessons are posted on Google Classroom. Work is submitted digitally. And we give live annotations and hold Google Meets for one-to-one -one live interactions and feedback. We are committed to one-to-one -to -one technology and we use iPads and laptops as our mobile platforms. Here there is a passion for what happens in the classroom. An easy statement you might think for me to make, but what might you see happening in classrooms if you wandered round the school? Learning starting immediately as the pupils enter the classrooms. Lessons starting with a question, and finishing with an answer. And lessons starting with an answer and finishing with a question. Immediate pace, QR codes, apps and digital resources, open questions, closed questions, directed and searching questions, self-evaluation, progress being checked over and over again, pupils working together with a keenness to participate, hot seating, group work, encouragement, Exemplary lesson planning, the teacher working the room well, free reading, impressive note taking, misunderstandings and errors being not ignored, richly resourced lessons, the teasing out of learning objectives, praise, academic intent, fun, noise, quiet, 
reflective places, smiling pupils and smiling teachers. How do I know this? It's my job as the director of teaching and learning. And I have watched hundreds of lessons and observed them, written them up, recorded them and discussed them with both pupils and teachers. I recently posed a competition to design a logo for Lee's Learning. When I saw the entries, I knew that there was something deeper within that logo. And so we as a school, both staff and pupils, looked at what we understood to be Lee's Learning. To learn here, we believe you need to listen, engage, analyse, respect, never give up, innovate, nurture and thus grow. At the Lees, we engage in the task to educate a child's whole being so that they can face the future. And our job as teachers is to help them make something of it and of their learning. So, is a good learner a thermometer or a thermostat? Come to the Lees to find out. It now gives me great pleasure to introduce Mr. William Earle, the director of the wider curriculum. It is Albert Einstein who is attributed as saying the famous dictum that education is what remains when what has been learnt has been forgotten, emphasising that a person should never restrict him or herself to all that is taught. Education is not something that you learn in closed doors. It is something you acquire by living the experiences. A successful education at the Lees is not only to be measured in examination grades in the same way that no person should ever be defined by those grades. The very best possible examination results remain critically important and we are very good at helping pupils achieve them. But they are not sufficient in today's increasingly challenging and complex world. Our pupils have to go through as many experiences as possible, good or bad, as they all make them a more rounded individual in the end. All the situations that the pupils go through during school prepare them, in a small way, to face the challenges they will face in real life. It is not just the formulas they learn or solutions they find in the classroom, but the feeling of overcoming and conquering something that once felt very daunting to begin with that helps them to develop. To do this, we have to offer breadth of education as it is the performing arts, sport, CCF, music, Duke of Edinburgh, community service, and the huge range of activities in schools such as ours that help foster these qualities. I believe they are fundamentally core to our ethos and that is what the wider curriculum at the Lees is all about. At the Lees, the wider curriculum is one of the three main pillars of life and is an integral part of the school week for all pupils, with a significant amount of time in the afternoons and early evenings devoted to it. Our philosophy is that undertaking a range of wider curricular activities will complement the pupils' academic studies as well as aid their personal development. This holistic view is intended to assure the three pillars of education at the Lees are connected to the benefit of the pupils. The wider curriculum aims to provide a high quality, varied and inclusive program that gives the pupils the opportunity to participate and feel good at something they enjoy. There are six main areas where activities are offered throughout the week, which foster interests as diverse as card games, street dance, and experimental science. We have a vibrant Duke of Edinburgh scheme with approximately one third of the current lower sixth signing up for the gold award this year. At the last presentation evening in January, 139 current Lesians had completed awards representing approximately a quarter of the school community. The weekly after school activity programme includes academic and cultural societies lectures and talks at school and in the city, practical and STEM opportunities, as well as sport, dance, drama and music activities. In the Rug Centre, pupils of different ages 
enjoy developing their skills in areas like ceramics, life drawing, design technology, and photography. STEM activities develop interest and skills in this important area of modern life, while supporting the opportunities offered through the curriculum. From years 10 to the lower sixth, our pupils take part in the Personal Development and Leadership Scheme, which combines CCF, local volunteering activities in the community, alongside opportunities to develop skills such as first aid and sports leadership. The performance arts enjoy an excellent reputation. The quality of music and drama productions is outstanding, and the quantity and range of opportunities for pupils means that they can benefit hugely with, from them. We offer speech and drama lessons, as well as a variety of productions for the pupils to perform in throughout their time in the school. Recently, senior productions have included The Sound of Music, Amadeus, Blue Stockings, as well as our popular Summer Cabaret. While Moulton House have performed The Cat in the Hat and Honk, Year 9, Great Expectations and Lord of the Flies, and in Year 10, Jekyll and Hyde, A Midsummer Night's Dream and The Crucible. Music is equally well represented, with a summer concert at the internationally acclaimed Saffron Hall as showpiece event. However, pupils also have the chance to contribute to our weekly Live at Bally G's Unplugged performances, lunchtime live concerts, and of course, house singing. We offer a wide range of ensemble groups, and these happen throughout the week, while pupils can also have individual lessons and take their grade exams. Everyone takes part in sport, whether as a member of a team, in hockey, rugby, swimming or netball perhaps, or individually in areas like squash, dance or badminton. Outdoor pursuits such as canoeing, climbing and orienteering are also on offer, as is rowing down on the River Cam. We have achieved much success in recent years with individual pupils reaching a high level of representative participation in a range of sports and our A teams performing at national level. However, we take as much pride in the success of the B and C teams as we do our A teams. And our aim is to develop the person and not just the player so that they can enjoy the benefits of sport beyond their time here. We firmly believe that the primary benefit and value of wider curricular provision at the Lees comes from the breadth of interests, life skills, personal qualities, experiences and attitudes that are developed through performance, participation and engagement, whatever someone's ability. These are transferable to the working life of the pupils and therefore huge benefit can be derived from undertaking them at school and beyond. What we hope to work for is to create balanced, happy and rounded human beings. Yes, we want them to have achieved academically and in other areas at the very top of their potential. But they also need those personal qualities and soft skills, such as resilience and determination, self-belief, curiosity, articulacy, manners and humility, mindfulness, leadership, teamwork, measured risk-taking, adaptability and time management, and importantly, a ready smile. The fact that such qualities are less easy to measure than pure academic achievement doesn't make them any less important educational objectives to us. Not if we are to enable our pupils to enter the adult world excited by the challenges that lie ahead. Central to the operation of the wider curriculum is the pastoral management of the pupils and being aware of their welfare and well-being. Therefore, the tutor, housemaster and housemistress, and myself often work together with parents to guide, advise and encourage pupils to pursue a healthy, sustainable programme of activities that complements their academic studies and overall physical and emotional well-being. If we are to remain true to Einstein's dictum, then it is vital that we continue to develop and nurture the whole person through the wider curriculum. Often, these are areas which provide the pupils with lifelong memories of their time here and ones that they reflect upon with huge positivity after they have left.
There are various ways to see what is happening within the wider curriculum. The school website has regular updates, while our various Twitter feeds are another useful source for you to look at. I would now like to hand you over to Oliver Peck, the Director of Studies. At the Leeds, we want what is best for all our pupils as individuals. Not only do we want our pupils to reach their academic potential in their public examinations, but we support them increasing their intrinsic curiosity about the world around them. Of course, this happens formally through taught lessons, but also informally in the houses, on the games pitch, in orchestras, during Duke of Edinburgh, or during evening activities. We aim to instill a love of learning in all our pupils. We aim to support them in discovering what they're passionate about and to encourage an academic ambition to go beyond seeing academic success as examination grades, but instead consider the knowledge gained through hard work as being itself innately good and beneficial to them. To my mind, this is what any good school should be doing. And this is why we aim to go further. We help Leesians to develop as learners by engagement with the Lees Learner Profile and in developing an understanding of how learning happens. We also expect all our pupils to contribute positively when they go beyond the school gates, with the experiences and opportunities they receive here continuing to influence them even when they leave the upper sixth. We support pupils in making excellent progress in all these areas through various means, but primarily through communication. Teachers regularly communicate progress and expectations with the boys and girls they teach through marking and feedback on their work and through one-on-one -on -one and group discussions in the classroom. Teachers also use our rewards and reporting structures to help pupils understand the progress they are making. Teachers regularly give each pupil clear and bespoke guidance on how they can improve and achieve more in their subject. We encourage pupils by rewarding them with academic points, academic commendations, and for the very best work, headmaster's commendations. When there is a problem, being a medium-sized school is a real strength. Teachers can contact tutors, housemasters and housemistresses, the head of the department and me to start conversations about the individual the moment they have a concern. This team allows us to support every child quickly with well-considered and specific guidance to help them do their best and to ensure they can reach their potential on every front. In larger schools, it is all too easy for pupils to be just another name on a spreadsheet and for them to receive generic support from somebody who does not really know them. One of the things that struck me most on arrival at these was that members of the senior management team know who every pupil in the school is. We know them as individuals, their strengths, their weaknesses and their very particular set of circumstances that surround each pupil in our care. As a school, we regularly communicate with you, our parents. We do this formally through records of work, parents' evenings and grades, but also through being part of a close-knit community. This community provides opportunities for informal conversations at the various events that take place within the school each week or term. This might be on a Saturday afternoon whilst watching a match, or on a Friday evening after a concert or drama production. It does not matter. We are also proactive in our communication with tutors and housemasters and housemistresses getting in touch the moment that we feel there is anything to worry about. One of my most important jobs is to keep a close eye on the progress of all pupils within the school so that we can ensure they reach their academic potential. I do this by paying close attention to reports and grades and by careful analysis of any internal examination marks. This more mathematical analysis does not happen in a vacuum, however. I always do this in conjunction with conversation. Conversation with those who know each pupil best. This allows us to develop the most complete picture of each child and to communicate with you, our parents, in a timely fashion. I honestly believe that no matter the academic ability of your child, we at the Lees can support them in reaching their potential. Hello, welcome to our virtual open morning. 
Um, it's a shame we can't meet you in person, but we've compiled a list of questions most frequently asked. I'm Tor, I'm a boarder uh, in Fenhouse and in Upper Six. Hello, my name's Matthew and I'm in Year 13. I'm a boarder in Schoolhouse. Hello, I'm Ruby, I'm in Upper Six in Granter House and I'm a home boarder. Hello, I'm James, I'm in Year 13 and I'm a day pupil in Barnhouse. House. James, why did you decide to join the Leeds? Um, well, I was at state school before and I remember the first time I came for a visit around the Lees and I met my housemaster, Mr Robinson, and he was so lovely and so friendly. And in that conversation, I was really kind of half sold already. And I remember walking down the stairs into the quad and there were these big, like, well, uh, Victorian red brick buildings. And I remember just thinking, you know, I'm in love with this place and I was sold from now on, really. How did you find your transition from your prep school to the Lees? Well, joining a new school is always daunting, but the Lees, there's there's so much support. I can, I always have my house master for advice and older years. I, there's also a huge integration system where the new kid can you know ha, get help from the teachers or just from older pupils, and it was quite nice and easy. Ruby, what subjects are you taking, and what are your aspirations after school? I'm taking biology, chemistry and maths and I'm hoping to study biology at university and then once I have a science degree, I'll see where that takes me, maybe into some pharmaceutical company or other business. Tor, so what do you enjoy most outside the classroom? Um, I've managed to get um, involved within quite a lot of different parts of the school, mainly sport with the different teams and hockey in particular, but also playing an instrument has enabled me to meet lots of different new people um, in all the groups and ensembles. James, did the school's wider curriculum help you take up any new interests? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know when I came to the school, I have always been quite a, a talkative and quite an opinion, opinionated person. Um, and having the chance to do debate in society has, you know, massively improved my public speaking skills and and just the knowledge of the wider world. Like researching for a debate is something that I enjoy and is kind of learning without without the textbooks, which is which is great. Ruby, who supported you as a new pupil and how did they do this? When I joined, I joined into Bissica House and the house mistress, Miss Prosser, was lovely. She was really funny and had a really dry sense of humour and helped us all to mingle and just enjoy the first few terms of school. And then I joined Grant House in sixth form and Frau, Mrs Williams, our house mistress, was also lovely. And because it was such a small house, she really made it so special that it was only girls in a small boarding house. Uh, did you always feel that there was someone to talk to if you had an issue or you were worried at all? Yeah, um, straight away in year nine immediately we were told who the head of pastoral care was and of course we also had our house masters and mistresses. Um, but aside from the staff, um, very quickly, especially in boarding houses, there's close connections formed within the years and so there was always someone I wanted to talk to if anything ever was worrying someone. So Matt, what advice would you give yourself as a new pupil joining the school? Um, my advice if you're a new pupil joining the school is get stuck in with absolutely everything and you know meet as many new people as possible. At least such a welcoming and supportive community that just that initial getting stuck in and meeting new people is always really nice. Why did you decide to stay on in sixth form? I decided to stay because aside from all the extra help I was getting with learning, it was mainly the sport and the team that I was playing in. I've been with the same hockey team for three years and it's lovely to stay with them for sixth form. And also the new curricular things you could do in sixth form were really exciting and I was looking forward to doing them. Tor, do you think you've benefited from boarding at the Leeds? Uh, yes, definitely. In year nine, I started out as a home boarder and switched boarding in sixth form um, and the change was huge. I had so much more time on my hands um, and was able to talk to people who perhaps I wouldn't in different years as they were boarding also. And so it was a great chance to just be a family really. James, what has been your happiest memory during your time at the Lees? Yes, I've had some really, really good memories at the Lees. Um, one that sticks out is from um, a Himalaya trip that I was lucky enough to go on and so we've been trekking for about two weeks 
and we'd been acclimatizing and taking it really slowly and everyone was really, really tired at this point. And we were just, you know, one base camp below our summit and um, the Sherpas just pulled out a cricket bat and a cricket ball and we just started playing cricket in, you know, like 4,800 metres. And I just remember thinking, how is a, a boy from Cambridge just in the Himalayas playing cricket with these Sherpas? And I just, you know, that was an incredible feeling. And I just think, you know, the Leeds has, has, has done that for me. Uh, and for me, something that I'll never forget was when we were in year 10, we were playing uh, for the under-16 hockey team. And it was the final match to see if we were to get into the Nationals and to play at the Lee Valley Hockey Centre in London. Uh, and we won, and it was just the best feeling. Um, and as a whole team, it was incredible, and I'll never forget it. What words best describe your time at the Leeds? I would say happy. Uh, busy and fulfilling. Um, supportive and welcoming. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for attending our virtual open morning. I do hope that you've found it helpful, that it's given you an insight into life here at the Lees. Of course, it's not the same as visiting us, and we look forward very much to meeting you in person soon. In the meantime, if you have any further questions or queries, please do contact my colleagues in the admissions department who will be delighted to assist you. Thank you very much.